So we're now heading into topic six, which is uh, talking about human physiology and how the working of the body occurs. And I really enjoy these questions, mainly because I'm doing medicine, but at the same time, I think it's a really good opportunity to, uh, to do questions which have really straightforward and simple answers. Now with the previous question, uh, previous topic rather, with the topic five, the, the types of questions could be a bit tricky and I always found that those ones, especially where you had to talk about the pros and cons, those ones were a bit more harder to do. But these ones I love and I find them very easy. So let's jump into the first question. So what is the main function of the large intestine? And you should know the structure of the human digestive tract with the large intestine towards the end. And you should know that its main function is the absorption of water. But let's also look at some of the other functions as well, listed in B, C and D. So the digestion of fats and proteins. What causes that? So this structure that they're alluding to here is actually the small intestine. The small intestine um, digests and absorbs the proteins as well as fats as well as carbohydrates. The absorption of nutrients is all the, also the small intestine. And in fact you could actually even make an argument up here that it's not actually the it's both the absorption and the digestion. So in regards to digestion, you could also talk about the stomach. Because digestion is really breaking down those complex molecules into something that's a bit more simple and can be absorbed by the small intestine. Finally, this last one, the recycling of digestive enzymes. You know, recycling of digestive, this seems a bit, uh, a bit random to me, but if anything, I suppose, you could talk about um, uh, the you could talk about the stomach, I suppose, digesting proteins, because remember, an enzyme is just a is just a biological catalyst, which means that it's a catalyst, which is a protein as well. So it's a catalyst protein. So I suppose if you were to say eat some meat and there were some enzymes to be in there, you could recycle those in the stomach as well. So if we move on to the second question, we're talking about another enzyme again. This time we're talking about lipase. Remember, every time you see A's, it's talking about an enzyme. So that be lipase, catalase, etc. Um, obviously, there are some exceptions as well. For example, in the liver, there's uh, an enzyme called cytochrome P450. And that doesn't follow the rules of having an A's at the end. But regardless, so let's look at this question. So, which of the following is correct for lipase? So we'd have, we have a substrate, as well as a source, and a pH optimum. And... An alternative name for lipase is to add a precursor to it, and you should know that it's also called pancreatic lipase, and that completely gives away where its source is from. So it's from that pancreas, so straight away we can get rid of this one and this one, and it's not B and C. So now we just have to differentiate between A and D. Now look, these pHs are, are, are very similar, you know, they're slightly basic, um, but pHs of 8 and 9 are relatively similar for your purposes. And what we need to know now is the difference between the substrates, A and, A and D. So what is a substrate? Triglyceride or fatty acid? Well, you should know from your basic uh, biochemistry that a triglyceride is actually composed of both the fatty acid as well as glycerol. So whenever you go breaking down, a triglyceride, you get the result on the right, which is the fatty acid and the glycerol. So in this case, the substrate is actually the triglyceride. So the answer is A. Now, if this heading over here said something different, if it said what the products were, and it included fatty acid as well as glycerol, then that, then D would be the correct answer. So that's why it pa really pays off to look at the title of the different columns. Those will really help you out in determining what the correct answer is. Next question. What processes occur during assimilation and absorption of lipids? So, key word that we need to talk about, we're talking about fats, we're talking about lipids here. So, with assimilation, assimilation, you can uh, think of assimilation as just uh, building complex molecules from simple molecules. So, broken down? No, not really, so it's not A. Lipids are incorporated into new membranes, being built together. Yep, yeah, that seems right. Um, how about C and D? passed into the lacteal? No, that seems more like digestion actually. Uh, sorry, not digestion. That seems more like absorption. 
and lipids are egested, doesn't seem like that. So, so far it seems like B. But let's look at B's answer over here. Absorption, lipid, lipids pass into the lacteal. Yes, exactly, that's correct. And that's what we exactly talked about uh, in this section here. We said that passing into the lacteal from inside the lumen of the gut into the, into the body itself was, a, was absorption. So that's why that's the correct answer. So question number four, which feature increases the absorption of glucose in the small intestine? So this question is just referring to obviously 6.1.7, but um, you just need to know about the different mechanisms which in cause an increase in surface area to volume ratio. And so let's write that down. So surface area to volume ratio. And there's a few different things. Firstly, it's the villi in the small intestine, but also it's a microvilli. Remember that villi are these like outpouchings on, on the, uh, which is part of the gut of the small intestine. But even on the on the villi, then you have microvilli as well, which kind of, which kind of cover the, um, which kind of cover the villi. And what this does is that it increases surface area to volume ratio. So in this case, the answer is very relatively straightforward, it's A. So lacteal, what does that does do? That's involved with absorption. Cilia are actually little hair-like structures which are found in the lungs, but not but tend not to be mentioned in the small intestine. And goblet cells, what do they do? Well they actually release um, the, the enzyme pepsin. So there you go, there's an enzyme which doesn't end in A, is another exception. But what pepsin does is that it actually breaks down um, protein. So I think a really good way of testing yourself uh, when doing these multiple choice questions is to not only get the correct answer, but also find out why the other answers are incorrect. Question five, what is, a true, what is true of the source products and optimum pH of once again lipase found in the human digestive system? So remember that we said that lipase, what's its alternate name? Exactly, so it's pancreatic lipase. So straight away, that will, that will give you the answer for this particular one. So you should know that the source is the pancreas, so it's C here. Um, the products this time, fatty acids, yes, that, that's correct. And the optimum pH is 8, yeah, that's about right as well. Um, so the stomach, no, that's not the source of uh, lipase, that's actually the source of pepsin. Um, salivary glands, no, that's uh, actually the source of maltase which breaks down maltose. And finally, the liver, it releases other enzymes, um, but not something which is mentioned here. And that's the end. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.